right, we're still talking about exponential functions today, but we're going to talk about writing our own equations today, population growth and decay, maybe even, even some bacteria uh, stuff, uh, half-life stuff. That's exciting, right? Um, <laughs> this is what the book says you need to learn this today. Exponential functions model many types of unrestricted growth. Logistic functions model restricted growth, including the spread of disease and the spread of rumors, which is just a joke to me. But apparently we can model the spread of a rumor uh, and see that it grows. At some point, it's like it's like population. At some point, it's reached the maximum number of people that it's going to reach. <laughs> and the spread of rumors. <laughs> My favorite math application uh, thing we can talk about the spread of rumors. Um, if a population is changing at a constant percentage rate, instead of talking about logistic growth, we can write it in this uh, form, where p sub zero. Guess what that is? Population. Initial population. And R is your constant percentage rate of growth or decay. Uh, but if we're talking about a percentage uh, rate, then you need to make sure you express R as a decimal. Right? So if it's 5% growth, that's 0 0.05. And uh, time is in periods. Somehow leave a blank so you have to write stuff down. function is exponential growth or exponential decay and find the constant percentage rate of growth or decay. Remember that the formula that I just gave you was p sub 0 1 plus r to the t power. So if you look at this number, how are you going to know if it's growth or decay? <laughs> yeah, if it's bigger than 1, that means we've added a number here. If it's smaller than 1, that means we've subtracted because it's 1 plus r, right? So you can kind of think about this. This would be like 1 plus 0.09. Right? You're not really going to do that on your homework, but. Isn't growth growth that same OG number that people are trying to like, like the statistics? Like, oh, yeah, it's like 5.24 I don't care what Mr. Love says. I'm still mad at him. So. <laughs> Mr. Love keeps sending. It's not my Facebook password, and I realize it's not my bank password, so I'm really not that concerned. What is he sending you? Apologizing? No, he sends me emails with just that, just my password. <laughs> <laughs> and if he writes a pass to someone, that Aaron Cole was late to my class the other day, and he wrote me a pass, and at the bottom of the pass, just wrote my password <laughs> out. <laughs> The first time he did it, the first time he sent me the email was the day my dog died, which he didn't, which he didn't know about, but he, he did tell me he felt bad, but I was like, it's okay, it made me smile, but like he sent me that email and I just wrote back, nice, real nice, and that's all I sent back to him, and he was like, and he said he cracked up laughing when he read it, but, uh, but then he's like, and then I found out your dog died, and I felt really bad. <laughs> 
I was telling Mr. Love how exhausting my children are, and he's like, you're not uh, convincing me to have children. And I was like, no, I'm not convincing you to have, to have children. They're exhausting. He's like, I'll just keep my dogs. I was like, good idea, except for they're going to die. But <laughs> I'm so angry about animals right now. Why do people buy animals when they only live like 10 to 15 years? Like, you know when you buy a little cute puppy, it's going to die. Like, it's just the dumbest idea ever. I'm in the I'm in the angry part of uh, grief right now, right? Like, that's one step in grief. I'm in the angry, the anger part of, of grief right now because I'm... <laughs> really mad and I just like why do people even buy pets? It's just the dumbest concept ever. <laughs> Turtles can't love you the way a dog can love you. Turtles don't snuggle you. They'll just bite you. <laughs> I'm pretty sure a turtle's never hugged anyone. <laughs> oh, a dog can nuzzle you. It's true. When I used to cry my dog would come up and rub his face on my face. Now I just cry about him and no one loves him. Yeah, you're a real dog. Yeah, okay. All right, enough about my grief. We're here for you. We're we'll be here for you. This is gross, right? Because it's bigger. And what would you say the rate of the constant percentage rate of growth is? Like, what would R in this problem be? Oh, 0.09. Right. So. I want you to give it back as a percentage. So if it's 0 0.09, then we can say 9%. It's growing by 9% each day. So what about number two? This is smaller than one. So I'm going to say this is decay. And if it helps, think about this as 1 plus R. So if you're not sure what R is, you say you know 1 plus r has to equal 0 0.05? If you can't figure out what it is? Negative 0.95, right? I didn't hear that, but I agree. So this, this population is not going to last very long, right? Like my dog. <laughs> I'm sorry. Ms. Bai was a wreck the other day after my dog died because she has like three dogs and four cats and a rabbit. And she's like, and I just start thinking they're all going to die. My rabbit's probably going to freeze to death. And she was crying. And I was like. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'll try to do better. It's not always like a rabbit. I'm just sad about my dog. We're sad about your dog too. We do know that it's not going to last forever. I don't cry anymore, class. So that's now you can have all the full four cards, all the things that you want. Without even doing anything. Okay, so part of your homework, they give you the formula. The other part of your homework, also not so bad. If they give you the information, I want you to be able to write the equation. And on your test, I expect that you can do this, which means I expect that you can write this. Uh, without me giving you that formula, that the population is the initial population times 1 plus r to the t power. Yeah. Because really it doesn't have to be a population. It could be something else. But. Maybe it's a population formula? Yeah. Oh, it could be rumors. Rumors. It could be rumors. Or it could be. <laughs> the big thing to pay attention to is if it's decreasing, you have to remember that r is negative. Because it notice on number four, it just says decreasing at a rate. So if you put positive 2.6 in there, it should be wrong anyway, so it's a decimal. So not bad to do, but easy to make some mistakes. So initial population, I'm going to go here. 1 plus r, but don't write 17 there, right? Yeah, percent means divide by 100. So that would be 0 0.17. If you didn't write the plus sign, then you Right. I, would wa I want you to write it like this. I was just going like this. Last time it was wrong with that. No, not yet, at least. So you do number four. Oh, my gosh. You already have not even written one thing down the whole time. What the hell? Where's the bike? Where's the bike? Where's the bike? Outside. Oh my gosh, so good. 
That's how rumor gets started. Yeah. <laughs> you get a Snapchat. I know. Oh my gosh, why is this going so slow? So if I'm decreasing, right, then I'm going to subtract, and that would be move that back two places, B.026, right? Also, not so bad to do, right? I heard you guys bang for like two hours long. Okay, so now I can ask you to write your own equation and answer a question about it. So it says the 2000 population of Jacksonville, Florida was 736,000 uh, and was increasing at a rate of 1.49% each year. At that rate, when will the population be 1 million? So step one is we want to write our equation. Step two, we want to see when it equals 1 million, and we could do it the same way that we did before where we uh, just kind of guess the tick, but we also could uh, use some graphic calculators and, and get an answer that way, which maybe we can look at. Um, what? I know, we have to... Um, You could, but you have to make sure when you plug 1 million in that you do that also, which means I'm just going to leave it like this. Plug what into T? Plug what into T? You tell me. When will the population be 1 million? 
Does T represent the population? No, P does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to know what this equals 1 million, right? And again, maybe you remember how to solve this from last year and Mr. McClure, but maybe you don't. And we are not learning how to solve this yet, which means we have two options. One option is we could just keep guessing values of T until we get close to a million. The other option is we could graph this equation, like Y is 1 million, and we could graph this equation, and we could just look to see where they cross. And I don't mean graph by hand, I mean graph to just grab a calculator. Let's talk about what we were supposed to do. I'll do it again. I was supposed to solve my already in the kitchen. I was thinking of how for plugging in the first. Of two equations. We're going to graph just a million. If you graph the line y equals a million, it's just a straight line at a million, but we want to know when that other function is going to cross it. So I'm just going to type in a million here. Yeah, my arm button was. That's just straight up. And then I'm going to type in the other function, which I think was 736,000. Is that true? Parentheses or times 1 point. I forget what it was. 0149. 0149. To the x power, right? It's to the t power, but we're in a function, so we said x. We're going to hit this caret button, and then the x button is right next to alpha. x, comma, t, comma, theta, comma, m. And it should put an x up there. Theta. Some say when you go to college and you join a fraternity or sorority, you'll learn theta when you're like, oh, whatever. I was saying that for the girls. Yours should have a little carrot button in here. So here's the issue. If we graph this right now, your window is probably like negative 10 to 10. We need to see a million. So really important, if you're going to use the graphing calculator and you're putting in really big numbers, you have to go and change your window. Well, mine's fancy, but you need to hit this caret button. If you hit caret and then x, yours should look like this. Caret, x. X is right here next to alpha. Do you have 100 to 100? No, because we need it to have a million, right? We need to go up to bigger than a million because we need to see a million on this. How about just like... 1,100,000. Oh, yeah. That's about it. Okay, so let's, okay, first of all, do we have our carrot x here? <laughs> no, because, there you go. There you go. Okay. Okay. Because it doesn't have everything, like, let's clear start over. Okay, so here we go. Go to window. So no, let's think about the x values. The x values are the years. Do you think we're going to need to go to a million years to see when that happened? Yes. Yeah. No. I would guess it's going to be, it started at 736, and we want a million. That's not that far away. So I would think no more than 50, but maybe it'll be more like, I would say definitely no more than 100. Do you agree with that statement? I have no idea. What are you talking about? So, pay attention. <laughs> No, you're looking at your graph. Listen, you have to think about what X represents. X represents the years. Don't put a million on your years, or it's going to be very hard to see where that intersects because it's not going to take a million years. So think of a reasonable number. I would say it's going to be no more than 100. So I'm going to hit my minimum is zero because I can't have negative years, right? And my maximum is 100. People really like graphing calculators, but if you don't understand how to change your window, Graphing calculators are useless to you because you don't know how to get the graph that you need to see. All right, so you have to think about x represents the years. The scale is what do you want?
want it to go by? Do you want it to go by ones? Which we could make it go by ones. Or since we have 100, instead of having 100 little dash marks there, I'm going to change my scale to 10. So then that way each mark will be 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. You with me on that? Um, that's the change in X. I don't know. I never changed that. So that's delta X. I always say I've been using graphing calculators since before you were born, which is not a lie. Um, <laughs> I used, I bought my first graphing calculator when I was a senior in high school, which would have been, uh, I graduated in 2000. So 1999, I bought my first one, but I used one in about 1997 for the first time. So, uh, yeah. That bastard's name was born. So, but you were a baby. <laughs> See, there you go. So I have never in my life of using these changed these things below Y scale. Never. never. People have changed them before, and I always say, why do you do that? But uh, it just makes it graph faster or slower, or it just it, it messes. You can read the giant book that comes with it and change it if you want, but there's no need to change it, okay? There's no need. X's and Y's changes your X and Y axis. That's what you need to change. Your Y axis is the population. Is that my population going to be negative? No. no, so I'm also going to make my Y minimum zero. I want the, I want to know when it gets to a million. So you need to make it bigger than a million. Because if you only make it go to a million, then the very top of your graph will be a million and you still won't be able to see. So you can make it go to two million. I'm going to make mine go to one million five hundred thousand. But it's okay if you make it go to two million. That's not, it's not two million zero. Oh. And your scale, again, you can make your scale go, go whatever you want. Um, I hate seeing all those little dash marks when you do make it go by ones. So, um, I don't know. I'm going to make my scale go by 50,000. That sounds pretty good to me. It's not a big deal about the scale. It just makes it look nicer, I think. If we did this correctly, when we graph this, we should see a straight line for a million. We should see an exponential curve. Crossing that of telling us when it hits a million. So let's hit graph, and here's where it all comes down to. Yeah, yeah. Why you go again. Mine was 50,000, but you can do it whenever you want. Oh, look, it worked out so nicely. So here's what I have here. Here's my million. Here's my population starting at 736,000 and growing exponentially. Who needs help getting this graph? Make it line and set the curve. Could we have done this faster by guessing and checking? Probably, right? <laughs> oh my gosh, we could do 10 million. No one think about that. Okay, that's wrong. I did 10 million? You did 100 million. <laughs> <laughs> I had 200 million, but I've noticed that in some of the places. Okay, so a couple options. Again, I know people hate in math when I give you options. But one, you could just use your arrow button and try to go over and see kind of where it crosses. But the exact way to get the exact amount of time for it to reach exactly a million is we can find the intersection of this on our graphing calculator. That's why graphing calculators are amazing. So here we go. Let's clear my TV's history so maybe we can watch this. I'm going to hit second, second. straight. Calc is your favorite button on the calculator. Because on calc, you can find a value, you can find zeros, you can find minimums, you can find maximums. What we're going to do is number five here. We can find where two lines intersect. Where's the curve? And when you only have two curves, it's going to ask you what's the first curve, one the second curve. But if you just hit enter, it'll jump to the other curve, maybe. Wait, wait, wait. I meant what was the first curve? Well, the other curve. I saw it. Just hit enter twice. It's good. And then it's going to ask you for the guess. So you just have to go over, or you can type in where you think the guess is. Oh, you see my little cursor right here? It finally came back to the screen. Or, if you don't want to do the scroll buttons, what did I make this go by? By tens? Yeah. It looks to me like at about 20. That's 20 plus 7. That's and then five. I can hit enter. And it tells me that... My population is going to reach a million in 20.725 years. So, oh my goodness, back to this. That's not right. 
That's not right. Why, why? Let's get unpause. I've already been unpaused. Oh. So we can say at 20 point, what was it? 7, Three. 2, 5 oh, years. Four, three. We could really be exact, and we could say if this happened in 2000, this would be 2020 and something. You could be super nerdy and could you change 0.725 to months and tell me in what month that happens in, or to days, or down to the exact second. We're not gonna do that. That's super exciting, right? No, I'm okay. No. So we can say, um, I don't know. We probably should. It definitely happens in 2020. But do we round up to the next one? How about we just say this? In 20.725 years. <laughs> the other type of question that's thrown in here is some Half-Life stuff. And we're going to spend a lot more time on Half-Life later. Today, we're just going to kind of do the shortcut to Half-Life. Suppose the half-life of a certain radioactive substance is 20 days and there are 5 grams present initially. Find the time when there will be 1 gram of the substance remaining. Remember the Pink Dawson problem? Mm -hmm. And you could have been here on Alpha 2 also. Um, there's a couple ways you can do this. There's one way where we can actually plug in and find what the um, base is going to be um, and work it out. Uh, but we're going to do a little shortcut to that today, all right? So if we're going to be talking about half-life, we're going to say f of, I don't know, we want to use t for time for x. What should we just say? I don't like little f of x. We're going to think back to our original formula uh, for exponential functions, like a times b to the x. Do you remember what A stands for? What did the P sub zero stand for when we had this? So anytime you have an exponential function and a number in front, it's just the initial amount. All right. So the so the initial amount on these problems will always be what's multiplied in the front. So I'm going to say A equals initial amount. And we could actually plug in um, 20 days in for x, and then we could solve for b and get this crazy decimal. But a kind of cool way to do it that I don't usually think about is that if we're talking about half-life, every time we do this, a is my initial amount, so it gives me a 5. We can say my base is a half, and that's because it's a half-life. And then your exponent uh, you have to throw in the uh, the half life here. You know, you all took some chemistry. You know, half life means it takes this long for half of it to decay, right? So you have to think about what. How could you write that as an exponent so that after 20 days, half of five would be left? If we just put one there, that would work for in the case of a half life. But what about if I wanted to know how much was left after 45 days or after? Uh, just three days. What if I wrote it like this? X over 20. This is one of those examples that I went back and looked in the book to find the answer to this because I originally did it totally differently. Like I did it, I don't know how you do it in chemistry class, but I found my base to be a weird decimal and uh, worked from there. But then I went back and looked in the book and I saw that they did the half life problems like this. And I was like, oh, that's pretty cool because now if I plug 20 in there, I would get 20 over 20, which is 1, and 5 times 1 half, I would get 2.5 less. And now I can plug in any value uh, and get how much is there originally. So it says, um, find the time when there will be 1 gram of the substance remaining. First of all, let's think about if our answer would make sense. Should my answer be bigger than 20 or less than 20 uh, in this problem? Bigger, because it's 20 days for half of it to be less. I want to know when will be one gram left. So this is my equation. Just like the population problem, I'm going to set this equal to one instead of one million. And again, we could use guess and check. 
But kind of what I wanted us to do today <coughs> is use the graphing calculators. So now we can do the same thing on our graphing calculator, only now we're going to have to change our window back to really small, right? I don't need it to go to a million now. I just want to know when will this equation equal 1. So you're going to want to make your window very small, or otherwise it's going to be teeny tiny at the bottom of your graph. Or maybe it'll be faster this time. So again, I'm just going to change my equation to 1 and 5 times um, 1 half. There is no fraction button on the graphing calculator because a fraction is just a, di a division problem. So when you want to type in 1 half, you just have to do 1 divided by 2. But make sure you put it in parentheses because you need to make sure you know the whole thing is going to the power. And again, mine's a lot fancier than yours. But you're going to hit that caret button, and it's going to show you the caret. You need to tell that the whole thing is in parentheses. So again, do another parentheses and do x divided by 20. One big thing about using graphing calculators is you have to make sure you type things in correctly. You have to make sure you can use the window button correctly. And again, if yours is going to have a caret there next to it instead of moving it up, right? There's no fraction. You have to use a division sign. And this is getting smaller over time. When we graph this, it's going to be an exponential decay model. Over time, eventually, there will be none left. So I'm going to go back to my window, all right? I don't need a million anymore. Um, how many days? I don't know. It could go to 100, so I'm just going to leave it as 100 and see what happens. Maybe I need to make it more than 100. I don't know. I'm just going to leave it like that for now, and if it doesn't intersect, I can go back and change it. But my Y max, I just want to know when it equals 1. So I don't need a million anymore. I'm just going to make it go to, um, I don't know, 5, since that's where it started. And I'm going to make it go by 1. All right, so you have to make sure that it, it makes sense to you what you're putting there. It kind of shows, do you understand what X represents in the problem and what Y represents in the problem? And then I'm going to hit graph. And again, that's my Y equals 1 straight across. And then this is my exponential decay. Over time, it's getting smaller. And so that looks correct to me. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. Looks to me like somewhere between 40 and 50 days. <coughs> So I'm going to hit second calc, and let's try Maddie's way that she just hit enter a bunch of times and didn't actually uh, guess anything. That's what I did. Enter, enter, enter. Why didn't you just know that? Like, <laughs> why didn't you ask it anyway? It's a program. What if there was more than two lines on your graph? That's when it matters. Like, what if you had a third line? It can't find the intersection of all three at once. You have to just pick two. When you only have two lines graphed, it's not a big deal. So this is... Well, because... These are lot, they're curves, they're equations, right? That's what I mean. So 46.44 days. Again, we could be really specific here, and we could say 46 days. And how would I change days into hours? So you'd have like 0.44 days, and you could multiply... That in one day, there's 24 hours. Oh, it's like chemistry. That is exactly it's my favorite thing in chemistry. Dimensional analysis. The two-dimensional analysis. Three dimensional analysis. 24, times 24. 10.56. So we could say 46 days. 10.56 hours. Or we could be uber nerds and change 0.56 into minutes, and then we can change minutes into seconds. Ten, uh, we'll just do 10.56 hours. Wait, how many seconds is it? 33.6. I just like to show you things. Alright, so this totally took way longer than I anticipated. Holy cow, we have time to find some more stuff. <laughs> What do you think it stands for? Graphing calculator. Uh, 30, 30, 
33 and 34 are like the ones that we did on the graphic calculator where we found the intersection. So what I want you to do is set them up, like have them ready to do on the graphing calculator, and as soon as you come in tomorrow, instead of waiting for me to say, let's get started, grab a graphing calculator and see if we can get them solved. Or you can guess and check and see where it intersects. Also, also there are graphing calculators online. If you just go to um, Google and type in free graphing calculator, a little one will pop up, kind of like the one I use, if you want to do that tonight. Also, there are free graphing calculator apps. I have one on my phone that I can graph on there if you want to do that um, at home. Or if you have a study hall later and you want to come borrow one, I can let you do that too. I just don't want to give you all one. Okay? So, this is your homework. At least set these up, right? Don't come in with these blanks tomorrow. I will give you like five minutes to, to do this, but we're not going to spend like 20 minutes doing this. Leave your graphing calculator on your desk and I'll come get them. Thank you. And just so you know, grading the queue 